It is 1902. The Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company of London, England prepares its first transatlantic message. It will be relayed around the world. Transmission time for each is limited. Stand by for wireless telegraph message from General William Booth. William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, sends one word. I'm Walter Cronkite, here to tell you the story of one of America's favorite charities, the Salvation Army. Have you wondered who these people are, this Salvation Army? I did, and this is what I found. I guess people of the Salvation Army are pretty much like all the rest of us. At least I'd like to think that. What is it about this organization that makes it, as they say, America's favorite charity? It prides itself on having a reputation for caring. From the Army's very beginning, its members and its workers have believed theirs is not a job, but a commitment. This Army's mission is summarized in a single word, others. The year is 1865. The American Civil War is quickly approaching its tortuous end. Lincoln has delivered his magnificent second inaugural, urging malice toward none and charity for all. In Britain, William Booth, a 36-year-old Methodist minister whose wife Catherine was pregnant with their fourth child, resigned his position as pastor of a comfortable church and aimed the thrust of his ministry at the wretched poverty of London's East End. Thus was born the Salvation Army, and on Christmas Eve, the only present in the Booth household was delivered by Catherine, a baby daughter, Evangeline, destined to extend her father's ministry and spread the joy of Christmas around the world. It's 1880, just 15 years after the Salvation Army's birth, New York newspapers recorded the arrival of a young man in full military uniform, accompanied by what were described as seven hallelujah lassies. His name was George Scott Railton, and he claimed to have orders from General William Booth of the Salvation Army to begin the Army's work in the United States. Near the docks in Battery Park, Railton and the seven lassies attracted considerable attention with their singing and their preaching. He claimed he was ordered to wage war against evil and despair. And then he marched all who would follow to Mrs. Doolittle's Five Points mission. In just three years, the Army spanned the continent with the simplicity of its spiritual and social message of hope and change. In 1890, Catherine lay near death, but urged her husband to do something about the awful scourge of child prostitution. Booth attacked the problem head on, in the courts and in parliament, with demonstrations of civil disobedience that resulted in the arrest of his oldest son, Bramwell. His pleadings before the courts of justice and humanity had a powerful effect in reducing child prostitution. Not finished, his next target was what he saw as the ugly, selfish use of young children as common laborers, which permanently condemned them to a life of poverty. Eva spends it all, the New York headlines trumpet in April of 1906. The infant Christmas present to Catherine and William Booth is now the national commander of the Salvation Army in America. San Francisco has just experienced a deadly earthquake and fire which ravaged the entire city with death and destruction everywhere. The commander, as she liked to be called, took more than $4 million, the Army's entire available resource for 1906, to the devastated city and spent it in relief of human suffering and pain. When challenged by the press, all she replied was, God will provide. The record reveals he did. In 1912, as William Booth passed into glory, the world stood poised on the brink of war. World War I began in 1914, and by 1917, the United States was part of it. Eva, ever the national commander, won General John J. Pershing's approval 
and sent young men and women with the troops into the lines, bringing food and care and a touch of home. The donut girls of World War I seem elevated in myth, but history proves the reality of their courage. Story after story from every regiment and division, from every branch of service, revealed the compassion and selfless dedication of a different kind of army, a Salvation Army. Buddies, they were called, angels of the battlefield, bringing comfort and peace in the midst of war. The historic and memorable relationship of the Salvation Army with America's fighting men and women has continued through every armed conflict this nation has fought, always going over the top. And what of the Salvation Army today? That same sense of compassion, that same selfless dedication and devotion to people in need are the hallmarks of their creed. The Salvation Army stands for hope, its founder William Booth said. When every other light is extinguished and every other star has gone down, this one beacon shines steadily and clearly from the darkened sky, he said. If I could only get to the Salvation Army, they will do something for me. Throughout the entire world, from the killing fields of Rwanda to the snow-covered villages of genocide-ravaged Bosnia, this Army's mission is summarized in a single word, others. That's their motto, their mission, and their commitment. Wherever human or natural disaster strikes, the Salvation Army still wages war. Its troops still go over the top to the hearts of men and women as they confront despair and disillusionment, as they attack alcoholism and addiction and wage war against poverty and evil. It's a unique group of people in those uniforms whose good deeds have been prevalent throughout its history.